you know, there are many different ways we can easily distinguish the level of a front end programmer. And within that, there is a skill called cross browser compatibility, which is the process of testing and ensuring the application interface can work with different browsers. So let's watch this video together to see how cross browser compatibility works. Here I have prepared an interface. The browser I'm using is Chrome and it's showing off what I designed very well until I receive the customer's email. And this is the bug mentioned. In Firefox browser, the interface with background blur did not work, which made the content inside unable to see clearly. Wait, obviously, the backdrop filter attribute has been supported in Firefox browser for a long time, right? And that is the story I want to tell everyone in this video. If the customer's Firefox browser cannot use this feature, it means that the application version is too old. We just need to ask the customer to update it. Of course, we can't just stop there. If we are professional front end programmer, when we receive this feedback, we will have to handle it ourselves. Obviously, the backdrop filter attribute is an attribute that is supported in most browsers today. Its use is completely valid just because an old browser cannot use it. We remove the attribute. This is an unnecessary thing. Instead, do the following. My original idea was to create an additional black background layer for use with browsers that do not support the backdrop filter. But with this method, normal browsers will also have black applied. And with background colors that are not transparent, the backdrop filter attribute will be ineffective. If we use a transparent background color to ensure the backdrop filter property works normally, then the color of the cart card will also be changed compared to the original design. So this is not the best way to do it. In CSS, there has long been an at rule called support used to check whether any CSS property is supported on the currently accessing browser. And when adding not, its meaning will be opposite. If the current browser does not support the backdrop filter attribute with a blur value of 30 pixels, then at this point, I will add some random properties. Attributes written in this area will only apply to browsers that do not support backdrop filter. So if I just add a black background to this area, the background effect only applies to the old Firefox browser and current browsers will not have any changes. So with this method, we can handle bugs in old browsers without changing the current interface. There are several pages of documentation about this property. On those pages, they often provide specific examples and more specifically when accessing that page in an unsupported browser then that page will not say that this feature is not supported on the browser the customer is using. Isn't it great? Many people think this feature is very complicated because the programmer will need to check and get information about the browser the customer is using, as well as its version. Then you will have to compare it with the data to know if this browser is supported or not. An announcement will be made at the end, but actually it's not that complicated. For example, in HTML, I create a notification element with the same content as the other side. And of course, by default, it will appear on the screen in every browser. So now I reverse it. By default, when accessing the website, this alert element will be hidden. But if the user is using a browser that does not support the backdrop filter feature, then I will use display block to display it. So I have been able to simulate the way websites check and display notifications without using JavaScript. This support rule is much more powerful because it can be integrated with many complex conditional statements, but in real projects, there is almost no need for such complicated testing. And this is what I want to share with everyone in this video. I'm creating a series of long videos sharing all the knowledge and tips in programming and web design. If you are interested, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to watch upcoming interesting videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment. I really want to hear everyone's opinions so I can do better. Thank you very much. See you in the next video. Mm -hmm.